right, this is Joe Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite tropical style trees that can grow many places in the USA um, and how to use it the best way possible. And what it simply is, is Moringa. As you guys can see behind me, there's like uh, three trees in the raised bed. And the amazing thing about this tree is that it grows super fast. So if you guys are a gardener, you guys want to have food sooner rather than later, and you want to have something that you literally plant once and you never have to plant again, and that depends on where you eat, live, um, you want to grow Moringa because actually as of March, these two, three trees that are here were not here. Last year in this raised bed, uh, they planted uh, one Moringa tree. It came up, it did great. Once the frost came, it lost its life, it got cut back. A uh, little stump was just uh, shooting up. And then come next March, once the frost had passed, things started warming up. It basically, the roots stayed alive under the ground and they branched out and they came up with three trees instead of one. And uh, the growth you see, which there's three trees, they're approximately uh, pushing over 10 feet tall at this point. And so they're making copious amounts of leaves. Now the Moringa is one of the best trees you guys grow if you live in a climate that you can do so year round, so things, places like South Florida, places that don't get freezes, maybe like some places in Southern California, easily you wanna grow Moringa in the ground and it's gonna be there basically all year long. If you live in a place that's, you know, may, might get a frost here and there and it's a light frost, you know, you might lose it, it might, you could cut it back to the ground, the roots will stay alive, provided you mulch it really well and, uh, you know, it doesn't get too cold because too much cold kill the roots and then it'll come back the next year, like where I am here. Now, if you live in somewhere like New York, don't grow it in the summer and then cut it back and expect it to come back. It's gonna be far too cold in the winter time under the ground. So in that case, if you live in a climate that does snow and all this kind of stuff, you will wanna grow it in some kind of container, uh, whether that's like a wine barrel or a big pot or something like that. Grow it outside in the summer and bring it inside, even in a space like a garage in the winter. You could cut it back in the winter, bring it in the garage so it doesn't freeze out and it'll stay alive in the pot and then bring it back out and it should come back, uh, you know, the next season. The other thing I would encourage you guys to do is that Moringa is started by seed and you want to check out Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. They're at rareseeds.com. They have a special dwarf variety of Moringa. So they don't tend to get as tall because Moringa could grow really tall really fast and get really lanky. And normally to harvest it, you basically just chop the whole tree down, harvest all the leaves off, then basically the 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 whole cutting that you took off, the trunk, you just stick back in the ground. It'll actually form new roots and form a new plant for it. And actually that's how some of the plants were started over there. Literally we just took cuttings of this guy, put it in a pot and then they basically rooted and now there's basically more plants here. So those are some of the basics of this uh, tree. It's an amazing tree. It's known as the tree of life. It comes from India. And so, you know, it's not necessarily acclimated to the uh, frost here. So, you know, that's why there's a caveat of growing it where it does freeze. But if you have it in a frost-free place, it's going to grow great. It grows really fast. And the cool thing about the Moringa is that virtually the whole tree has some kind of use, right? Whether it's the roots or the leaves or the pods themselves, they call them drumsticks. It's also known as drumstick tree. You could eat the drumsticks, you could eat the seeds, uh, you could use the roots. Um, you could also use the uh, bark as uh, dyes and all this kind of stuff, right? So it's a very useful tree to have around and I encourage you guys to grow it by all means. Um, today we're fo focusing specifically on the best way to use it, which is the leaves. And unfortunately, you know, many people may be coming across this video because they're looking up Moringa because they have a friend that uses it, right? And they get it in a powder, right? I would encourage you guys always, instead of buying some kind of powder in a package that you don't know if it's been cut with anything, you don't know how it's been processed, dried, grown, all this kind of stuff. It could say organic on there, but then maybe it's not really organic. I mean, I don't, you don't know if you don't do it yourself. Grow it yourself. That way you can ensure that, you know, you're growing in the richest uh, soil with micro life. Uh, that's the bacteria and fungi, as well as the trace minerals like we're growing here. So you could have the freshest possible and highest quality leaves. In addition, you know, if you're buying some kind of green powder in a package, you don't know, you know, were the leaves like turning brown before they harvested them and they dried them and then they just powdered them up or did they pick them fresh and then dry them at a high temperature or a low temperature? You know, there's pros and cons to each. I mean, 
avoid all that stuff, avoid paying these high prices, you know, up to $40 a pound of dried Moringa leaf, leaf powder and just grow it yourself. It grows really fast under the right conditions. And the other thing I want to warn you guys against is don't water, don't give the Moringa too much water. It doesn't like it at all. Um, it's probably better to go a little bit on the drier side than the wetter side. In any case, uh, if you guys are growing it yourself, you could harvest the leaves fresh and use it right then and there so you have a minimal loss of nutrition in the leaves before you get to um, you know, ingest them into you to get all the health benefits. And you know, Moringa is touted as you know, a superfood and it has, you know, I don't know, 10 times more protein than milk and 17 times more iron than spinach and four times more protein than eggs and all these crazy numbers I could spout off. But basically just know this, it's one of the most nutritious foods on the entire planet that unfortunately most people are simply not eating. Anyways, uh, what's really important to me is maximizing the nutrients in the food that I'm eating. So we're gonna go over to the Moringa tree and I'm gonna show you guys how to harvest the best leaves to process into your juice. So the first tip I wanna share with you guys is actually how to harvest the best leaves on your Moringa tree. So the best leaves are at the top of the tree, not the bottom. Basically, as you go up uh, the, the trunk and you know, basically our trunk uh, splits off here and this is the lowest branch this is basically like the oldest, the lowest branch is the oldest. So the lowest branch on this upright here is really old. As you guys can see, some of the leaves are getting yellow and actually that's the beta carotene you guys can see through the chlorophyll. That's basically uh, dissipating out of the leaf after the leaf gets old. Also, if the uh, tree is under stress, you'll see a lot of yellow leaves and uh, that'll gen generally tend to happen on the lower uh, branches. So you don't want to harvest these. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this down all the way so you guys can see that basically the top crown of the tree here. And these are fairly flexible, although they will break if you bend them too much. But some of the most nutritious leaves are right here, just the little baby leaves. That's where all like the, the plant hormones are occurring and all the action is going because a plant is putting energy up to these little baby shoots to get them to grow bigger so that they could start capturing the sun and photosynthesizing and making energy uh, for the tree here. So while you could harvest these little small ones, and if I was making something like a salad, you know, I would be doing that because also these ones are a lot more tender. I don't want the super young ones to harvest for juicing what I'm doing today. So, you know, maybe this is like the first, first, actually there's a few small sets. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six. Maybe we're gonna come out to the sixth set. And the sixth set here, you guys can see, we just snap off the whole branch and just take it off. And these are nice, young, uh, tender leaves that are nice and dark. And we're just going to come and uh, snap off some of these guys, starting at the top, right? And if you, the further you go down, the more old they get. So I want to do a comparison. You know, we're going to harvest one here near the bottom. So in here at the bottom, this is how big the branch looks and how big the leaves are. And at the top, uh, this is how it looks. So here's older on this side, younger on this side. You guys see the difference? Basically, there's a lot more space in between here. Uh, and there's actually a lot more leaf density just the, for the fact that all the leaves are much closer together. They're also uh, much smaller. And so I like to harvest these because generally they're more, more nutritious than these larger leaves. That being said, you know, if you only got a bunch of larger leaves, harvest them. And uh, sometimes what I like to do is I like to come around to the bottom of the, of the tree and harvest the big, larger leaves for juicing like I'm doing. Because, you know, at some point, uh, the bottom leaves are going to turn yellow anyways and instead of turning yellow and going to your compost and feeding your bacteria and microbes in your compost pile to then re-enrich your soil for next season, hey, it'd be far better to use those leaves and have the nutrition going in you. Of course, if you have, you know, your, your pick of the litter uh, per se, you know, I would encourage you guys to get the smaller leaves and if you have a lot of trees, then you could always harvest a few small leaves off every tree which out, without majorly impacting uh, the growth of the tree. And I want to always encourage you guys not to over harvest any of your plants um, or that can stunt their growth and they'll grow a lot slower. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and harvest some of the best leaves off these trees. We're going to get a big bunch of leaves and then we're going to go come back at you and show you guys how we're going to process these leaves into a delicious edible drink. So now I'm going to share with you guys actually the best way to use your fresh harvested Moringa. I know a lot of people might take their Moringa, they'll put it into soups or stews and, and cook it but you lose some of the nutritional and beneficial qualities of the moringa when you heat the moringa up uh, this is especially true if you basically just put the leaves in whole without first chopping them up right 
inside the leaves of the moringa, much like the leaves of the broccoli, cauliflower, and other cruciferous vegetables, there are there are isothiocyanates, and basically. Uh, this should actually be macerated or chopped up before you heat process it so that the enzymes are still active to basically um, turn these into even more powerful uh, nutrients for our bodies. So I don't like to cook with the Moringa personally. What I prefer to do is instead is maybe just uh, chop up leaves, add them into salads. Um, you could actually use this in smoothies, um, but even better than that, in my opinion, is actually using a juicer. Now. I do want to give you guys a disclaimer that for a living, I sell juicers at discountjuicers.com. So if you are looking for a juicer uh, to process Moringa or any other fruit and vegetable, please check me out there. Also, be sure to check my other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash raw foods, where I review all the name brand juicers so that you guys could find the exact one for you. Uh, today, I'm actually using the Omega VSJ843, and at present time, uh, this is my favorite juicer because it juices a wide variety of different produce items. That being said, the reason why I'm juicing the Moringa and actually not putting it in a smoothie, for example, which is another popular use of Moringa and other vegetables, is because this juicer runs at a low and slow 43 RPMs or revolutions per minute. That means it runs very slow to slowly basically grind, squeeze, and break open the fibrous cell walls and give us all the nutritious, beneficial liquid inside the Moringa. You know, what Jay Cordich, the juice man, said was, it's the juice of the fiber that feeds you. You know, we're not set up like a cow and we can't really digest fiber and get all the nutrients out unless we use our teeth, which actually are the best juicers on the planet, so you don't really need a juicer. You just need to put the Moringa into your mouth and chew it into a mush and then swallow it much like you're a baby. That's why we give babies baby food because they don't have teeth and eat everything mushed up so that they can digest it in their digestive system because in a baby's digestive system or our digestive system, we can only utilize things or, that are in a liquid state. So if whole leaves are coming through us going in, they're gonna literally come in one end and go out the other end. <laughs> and if you think about it, we are nothing more or less than juice extractors, right? We might eat some food on the, you know, in our mouths. It's gonna go in, we're gonna chew it up and out one side of us literally comes the juice and out the other side of us comes all the fiber that we didn't use and that's literally what the juice juicer is doing it's extracting the fiber that would basically go right through us anyways not to say that we don't need fiber that's a whole other topic but it already extracts a juice so that our bodies have the easiest time to extract the nutrients out many of you guys might have just had a big thanksgiving dinner you know and after a big thanksgiving dinner you might kind of feel tired after thanksgiving dinner that's because our bodies take a lot of energy to digest and extract the food from the food you guys just ate, right? You might, feel, you might feel like taking a nap after you eat a big meal. And that's because your body's now having to work and digest all the food, but see, juicing does all the hard work for your body so that you could drink the juice and you'll just have energy to go because now your body doesn't have to invest all the energy to get, basically get the energy out of the food you just ate, right? So that's why I really like juicing and I think every gardener should own a juicer. And it's, and it's a special way to process and condense a lot of the vegetables you guys eat. Many people are always like amazed, like, John, how do you eat all the food? Well, hey, you know, I grow a lot of food, but people don't understand, like when you juice it, like I harvested like 18, you know, of these branches here that have lots of leaves, actually 16. And you know, that, that took a bunch out of the trees, but I could go back there, you know, all the, you know, several days out of the week and keep doing this. And as I'm harvesting them, they keep growing, unlike if you go to the grocery store and buy some greens to juice, right? They're gone. But when you grow them, I mean, literally the tree, the plant, the vegetable plant is just giving you free leaves to juice all the time as long as you don't pick them too fast. And for that reason, whether you're a gardener or not, I don't encourage you guys to juice any one food each and every day for the rest of your lives. That's asinine and that's insane in my opinion, right? There are a variety of foods put on this planet for us to enjoy. And I want you guys to rotate the different foods that you have. So eat seasonally, you know, Moringa is only in, t in season most of the year, except when it freezes here. And so that's when I get to enjoy it. You know, other times of the year, especially the, you know, fall, winter, I get to enjoy some of the winter vegetables, you know, some of the spinaches and collard greens and other cruciferous vegetables and arugula, um, things like watercress, mache, um, tung ho, <laughs> all these different things, you know. And so I always rotate 
the item I'm juicing. This is very important to ensure that you're getting some of the phytonutrients that are in here, but also you're not getting too many of the anti-nutrients that are in here as well. You know, the anti-nutrients, we think of them as anti-nutrients. The plant just basically makes metabolites, right? Uh, the sun comes down and hits the tree, bugs try to eat it, you know, fungus tries to get on it, and the plant makes all these different plant compounds or metabolites. A tomato, for example, makes up to 300 different compounds within it, right? One of them we call lycopene, some could be vitamins and minerals, and the plants are making these not for our benefit, but for its benefit so it can actually fight off diseases, uh, bugs and pests, and other creatures from eating it in nature. And so we want to respect the plants and only you know eat eat like moringa maybe like drink it like we're juicing today once or maybe twice a week and the other days you know juice some okinawan spinach or some some grass you know what i mean you could juice grass and eat it I mean, many people don't know that right and so yeah rotate your diet very important right so uh anyways the recipe today is while i have juiced moringa straight and took moringa shots this stuff is incredibly strong Everybody is at a different place in their life. I'm really used to drinking like strong green juices and I could handle them straight. That being said, especially if you're new into juicing things because it concentrates it, literally, you know, you could take a pound of leafy greens, whether they're moringa greens or lettuce or kale, collards, Swiss chard, you could juice it and that one pound of greens have now only instantly turned to only eight ounces of concentrated juice which that eight ounces contains the majority of the nutrients providing you're using a good juicer um, that were in the one pound. So really you could, you could maximize the amount of nutrition you guys are getting in your body. This can be very important, especially if you're trying to fight a disease or fight an illness. You know, there's a therapy called the Gerson therapy, right? That heals uh, incurable people. I've met many people that have used the Gerson therapy to heal themselves from cancer and other illnesses, right? And they drink copious amounts of juice to basically uh, ramp up their their body, right? I mean, carrots, on the Gerson therapy, they juice a lot of carrots and apples, you know? And carrots are anti-cancer, and you juice enough of them, man, I've seen people turn their cancers around. So, I mean, all of these amazing uh, plants of the earth make amazing phytochemicals. I mean, the, the Moringa, it's like, it's a blood sugar regulator, you know? It could also help regulate your blood pressure. You know, it's neuroprotective, it's good for your brain, gonna keep you healthy, young with a good mind right I mean it's just rich in protein and amino acids and beta carotene and iron and provided you're growing in rock dust minerals has a whole host of other trace minerals in there so yeah while well, you could do it straight I'm gonna be juicing it with some other things that make it taste good more palatable and also water it down and actually even in some respects make it better so what well, we got 16 basically uh, uh, leaves here or branches of the moringa we're also going to juice uh, one bunch of organic celery. Now the organic celery I put in there because that adds a lot of essential electrolytes. That's very good for us, you know. Instead of drinking Gatorade for your electrolytes, I wish that people in athletics and stuff would juice some celery or use something like coconut water, very rich in electrolytes. Um, also this acts as a nice source of water. So basically the plants absorb water, um, hopefully it's from the, the rain and not from the city tap water. and uh, they purify it. So this is basically a structured living water contained within the celery and when we run it through the juicer we're getting the celery juice or the celery water with additional nutrients. And so that's going to help water it down and then for some extra flavor and sweetness because we like it sweet, right? You're used to drinking Cokes and sodas and pops and these overly sugarly sweet drinks. We're using nature's sugar right here. We're using one whole pineapple here. And the pineapple is good because it has the enzyme bromelain that can actually help reduce uh, swelling and all this kind of stuff. Plus it just, who doesn't love a sweet pineapple juice? And then also we're going to mellow out some of the acid in the pineapple juice uh, with the celery and also the greens of the moringa to make an amazing drink. So the first step before juicing is to um, prepare the produce. So I'm using a vertical single auger juicer and this is the kind of juicer if you want to juice a little bit of everything. You want to juice some fruits, you want to juice some vegetables, and you want to juice some leaves. This is the machine to do it because it basically juices everything fairly well provided you prepare it properly. So I'm going to take a few minutes off camera or actually on camera. We'll just speed it up so you, I could prepare the produce. We got to cut off, we got to take the top off the pineapple, cut off the sides, cut up into pieces, cut up the core in little bits. We got to cut off the top and the bottom of the celery, dice it up into little bit pieces, and we got to cut this moringa because if you just put whole moringa stocks in, in this machine, 
it's not going to be a pretty sight. It's going to jam up. It's going to clog, and you think you're going to think that juicer is a piece of junk. But the whole problem is you're just not using it right. So we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to start prepping. We'll fast forward this so you guys can see what I'm doing, but we don't have to waste any of your guys' valuable time. So I just got done preparing all the produce. As you guys can see, I got the celery basically uh, diced up into uh, eighth inch pieces is my optimal size, but honestly, they're probably about a quarter inch. Uh, the pineapple is basically just in long strips that could actually just uh, feed right into the juicer. Uh, and the core of the pineapple was chopped into little bits. If I remember, I'll put a link down below on how to process pineapple and cut it properly so that it actually works in the juicer uh, without clogging. And more importantly, the moringa, what I did was I had you know 16 whole like uh, stems off the tree, and I, I, I took basically I cut off um, just the tops with all the greens. Right, we don't want to really juice the stems, especially in this juicer. They're going to clog it up. If you have a, other kinds of juicers like a single auger uh, horizontal style, like Omega NC 800 or a Solo Star 4. Um, you can juice the stems, or if you have a Green Star Pro or Green Star Elite, you could totally juice the stems and you wouldn't have to cut all the produce up into this smaller pieces. That being said, every juicer has its pros and cons. I like this one because it's basically fast, easy to use, and it juices a wide variety of things. So yeah, we just basically cut it off, uh, the stems, and uh, this, is, this is how they look like now. And all the top, the smaller stem diameters basically just got put on a pile, and I chopped those up into hopefully a quarter inch uh, pieces or less. So now I basically just have a diced up uh, moringa here that could easily go through the juicer. The next step is to simply juice. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this juicer on and I do like this machine because it runs at a low and slow 43 revolutions per minute. It is a vertical single auger machine and the Omega VSJ 843 and the Slow Star juicer are the best two vertical juicers on the market that I've seen for juicing greens and other things like this. Um, I'll put a link down below where I have a video comparing these two machines. And these are a lot different than just the standard juicer you'd go down to the department store to buy, you know. You go to a department store and buy a juicer, you know, they're maybe a hundred bucks. You could get some for 40 bucks. Those are high speed centrifugal ejection machines. I do not encourage you guys to get one of those machines because they tend to run very fast. Uh, they oxidize some of the nutrients. They blow air into the juice you're making. They lower some of the beneficial nutritional qualities in the juice. In addition, they don't tend to juice the leafy greens very well. And the leafy greens are the most important vegetable on earth. I believe everybody should be juicing on a consistent and regular basis. My goal is to get two pounds of leafy greens in me a day and whether I'm juicing a pound of moringa like I am today or whether I'm eating a salad with a pound of vegetables from my garden or even vacuum blending some of my vegetables, you know, those are all excellent ways to get them into you. So yeah, I, and furthermore, the warranty on those inexpensive machines are like 90 days or a year and if it blows up after that time, it's a throwaway device and you gotta buy a new one. You know, the warranty on the VSJ 43 is 15 full years and so should you be juicing in 10 years from now and the machine breaks right, the company will uh, cover it and repair it at no cost to you under warranty, which is simply amazing. So, you know, I want to encourage you guys to invest in good quality things and products that you buy so you'll be using them a long time instead of all these disposable things in our unfortunately disposable society. So uh, let's go ahead and turn this machine on. Uh, you can barely hear it running here and the first thing I always like to juice are something very liquid or the softest stuff, so the fruit. So I like how we could just literally dump the fruit in there. It auto feeds without you having to use the pusher next to it. That's one of the things you don't want to do with this machine is use the pusher. You guys can see we're instantly getting straight pineapple juice. Now we're going to go ahead and spike it with just a handful of Moringa right into the chute there. Once we got some of the Moringa in there, then we're going to go ahead and put some of the celery. This is running at a very slow rate uh, to extract the nutrients out and literally grind it up. And out this side is basically the, the fiber. And I want to caution you guys right now, you know, a lot of people think, John, when you juice, you lose all the fiber. Well, you know, there's two commonly accepted types of fiber. There's also many more, but the two commonly accepted types are soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber basically dissolves in water. It's soluble in water. So that's what we're getting when we're getting the juice. So we're keeping all the soluble fiber. Uh, we're keep, we're get, getting rid of all the... Um, insoluble fiber, right? That does not dissolve, and that's coming out this side over here. 
So yes, uh, juicing will keep some of the fiber. For example, on carrots, it's about 48 to 52 percent uh, soluble to insoluble fiber. So even when you're juicing carrots, you're keeping about half of the fiber. And you know, I mean, if I had to pick one fiber that's more important than the other one, I'd say the uh, soluble fiber is actually more important. That has a more beneficial effect in our bodies, based on my research and from what I've seen. Um, that being said, we do need fiber in our diet, so I don't encourage you guys to live on a juice diet. I like to drink juice once a day, and of course, other times of the day, I'm eating fresh fruits and eating a big salad out of my garden every day, so I'm getting plenty of fiber in my meal. Um, people also sometimes like to eat this fiber. I, I find it tasteless, and it's only good for worms or your compost pile, but you know, people dehydrate it and put it in stocks and stews. Some people feed it to their dogs, mix it with their dog food so they could you know, feed their dogs some good stuff, but also feed them less food. It just depends on you. You know, if I want to add fiber to my juice, I'm going to take some flax seeds, grind them up, and then add those uh, powdered flax into my juice to get some extra fiber, not using this stuff because actually powdered flax is actually more beneficial, in my opinion, than just the fiber coming out of the juicer because it has things like lignans and, I mean, flax in itself is a whole amazing food due to some of the anti-cancer benefits in there. Anyways, I mean, I could talk your ears, guys' ears off all day long because I'm just going to be sitting here feeding things uh, one handful at a time in the juicer as I'm rotating the different items I'm putting in. But uh, we'll save you guys uh, some time here and we're just gonna go ahead and speed this up for you guys and we're gonna come back at you uh, when I'm done juicing. All right, so I've juiced probably about maybe roughly half of everything and my collection uh, cup is already full so I'm gonna have to stop now and I'll show you guys what happened and what we got here and I'll get back to juicing the rest a little bit later so we're gonna go ahead and turn off this machine we're gonna go ahead and put down this spout cap so we don't get any drips here and then uh, what I've made so far is basically 35 ounces of Moringa organic celery pineapple juice that's a uh, 1,000 milliliters or one liter Right, and this is literally concentrated moringa, pineapple, and celery. We're gonna go ahead and pour off a little bit in a cup here. And look at that, look at that nice clean texture there. A very little residual pulp actually went into this juice. And now we're gonna go ahead and try this juice here for you guys on the camera. Wow, that's amazing. In my mouth, I feel like right now it's like it's like radiating like heat, kind of like you ate a hot pepper, but you know when you eat a hot pepper, it kind of like radiates and it sits there. This I felt like it was hot because the burningness of the Moringa is kind of like spicy. Um, you feel it, but then you feel it slowly dissipate in your mouth into nothing. This has a nice clean flavor. You taste mostly, uh, let's see here. I mean, you taste mostly sweet, but then you get a little bit of the tart, and that's, I think, the moringa. The sweet is a pineapple, the tart is the moringa. The celery just kind of adds a little bit of body and extra juice, so it's not so strong and concentrated. Mm. Definitely one delicious juice, and by far the best way you guys can be uh, using the moringa you guys grow. Now, while I always encourage you guys to harvest and use your produce fresh out of your garden, right? And I want you guys to eat primarily out of your garden. Sometimes that's not always possible, right? I mean, I'm not currently growing pineapples, and this time of year I'm not growing celery. So I, you know, got these from the store. And hey, you know, if buying some celery and buying some pineapples at the store allows you now to eat your moringa that otherwise would just be sitting on the tree because you're not eating it straight because it tastes, you know, pretty strong, honestly, uh, and you get it inside you, and now you get some of the benefits of that plant inside you, I think that is a good thing. And you know, here's a trick, right? Besides doing the pineapple celery with moringa, you could do pineapple celery and John Procombens or longevity uh, spinach. You could do, you know, uh, pineapple celery kale. You could do pineapple celery chard, pineapple celery spinach, right? There's a multitude of different kinds of ju juice recipes you can make if you guys own your own juicer. You guys are the chef, you're in control. It's not like if you go to the store and you wanna buy a juice, you gotta buy one of the pre-made juices they made for you. And I don't think yet I found a juice actually that had Moringa or especially Moringa to this concentration because this is actually quite strong and I've been doing this for a while. So if you haven't been doing this for a while and you're kind of a scared because Moringa is pretty powerful stuff, could be detoxifying and people could have reactions to juices, honestly, 
you know, I would tend to do probably a lot, the same amount of pineapple and the same amount of celery. Those are pretty mild. And do like four leaves of moringa. See how that tastes for you, right? Next time, up it to eight. See how that tastes. If that's too strong, stop at eight, right? Keep that up for a month. Once your body's good with doing eight leaves, up it to 10, then 12, and then like I did today, 16. And maybe at some point you might want to do like half a pineapple, half the amount of celery, and 16 leaves of moringa, but that's totally up to you. I don't, you know, I like this recipe. It's a nice mild recipe. I don't like things too strong and I don't need to be the man and I'm gonna drink it straight because you know I've drinking straight green juices I've thrown it up before too and that's not too fun but uh, the other thing I like to say is that you know what if the only way you guys can get moringa because you're not yet growing it is in a powder you know I think by far by having some kind of powdered moringa and if you don't normally eat it that's definitely better than not eating it because I want you guys to have an inclusive diet of including all the different plant foods as possible I mean there's so much research that's already been done and new research still have yet to be done on the moringa and how an amazing what an amazing plant it is and how it can help you heal different kinds of ailments in your body or maybe they're not even ailments maybe the problem is you haven't been eating the moringa your whole life and you're just not eating healthy foods healthy plant foods from your garden right so start a garden today if you guys haven't already grow moringa you could start it from seed you could grow it inside your apartment in Brooklyn in New York City in LA wherever you live it'll grow in a nice pot make sure you get that dwarf variety give it lots of sun put it right by the sunny window don't water it too much have a good rich soil check my other videos for container gardening and building good soil with healthy nutrients so your plants could thrive if you guys want to get a juicer hey please be sure to support me in my work by making your purchase at discountjuicers.com I'll put links down below in the description so you guys could link to my other videos talking about juicers um, if you guys like this format, liked how I juiced and you learned more about Moringa today, hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. That'll encourage me to do more videos like this in the future. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't mean you, you'll be notified of my new upcoming episodes. I'm coming out about every three to four days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And if you are already sub subscribed, please be sure to click that little bell button right below my video. That means you will get notified actually when my videos come out because you can be subscribed and then not get notified because YouTube changed that pretty recently. Also, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 1,300 episodes at this time. Teach you guys all aspects on how you guys could grow your own food at home. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing. Mm -hmm.